Here is an input output table with two variables. Notice it has four rows. Here's a Carnot map. Here's an input output table with two variables. Notice that it has four rows for each of the combinations. And here's a Carnot map uh, that has two variables, x and y, and it has four boxes. So really, uh, they represent the same thing, but the Carnot map only shows the outputs. Well, no, it shows the inputs too, right? The inputs are laid on the labels. It, instead of showing them as rows, it shows them in a grid. So it's really showing exactly the same information, just in grid form. So the way that we map an input-output table to a Carnot map is we find the column and row that match. So here we have x is 0, y is 0, and here in this box we have x is 0 and y is 0, right? That's the row 0 and the column 0. And then the output is 1, so we put the output right in that box. So it goes right there. The next one is where x is 0 and y is 1. So that's this box, right? Because that's where x is 0 and y is 1. And the output is 0, so we put the output right there. The next one is where x is 1 and y is 0. So that's this box, and the output there is a 1. So we put the 1 there. And the last one is where x is 1 and y is 1. And the output is 0. We put the output there. So here we've mapped every bit of information from this table to the Carnot map. And that is what we need to do first. That's the first thing we do is we map those values into the Carnot map. Then we're going to group. And grouping has to be done in powers of two. That means we can have a group of one or a group of two, a group of four, a group of eight, a group of 16. But we can't have a group of three or five or six or seven. It has to be a power of two. So th these are the rules of Carnot maps. This is how they work. And we want to make groups as large as possible. So here we have a group of one and a group of one, but we also have a group of two. And so when we get to choose, we're going to choose the group of two because that's a larger group. And we just prefer to have larger, larger groups. It will actually make our terms smaller. So um, are more simple. So here we're going to take this group of two. Now, once we get that group of two, we want to write an expression that represents each group, right? So however many different groups we have, we write an expression for each one. And that expression is a, a combination, actually a multiplication of the variables or the complements, depending on whether it's a zero or a one, uh, that do not change. So, oh, did I mention that the groups are groups of one? We're not dealing with zeros. There are other ways to use Carnot maps where you do use the zeros, but we're just learning one way to use a Carnot map, and it only deals with groups of one, of the ones. So we're really just looking at when an expression uh, results in a one. So now we when we look at this, we see in this group that sometimes x is 0, sometimes x is 1. So what we do is we see a change in the x. But what we see also is that the y is always a 0. And that's what we want to keep track of. We want to keep track of, oh, this is the y is what's not changing. And so the way we write y is a 0 is with the complement of y. So when the how we identify this group is complement of y. And it's the only group we have in this particular Carnot map, so that is the entire expression. And so we can use that expression to make a circuit. It's also that same expression represents that same truth table that we had before. In fact, if we go back there and we look at it, and we can see that not y and not y is where the ones are, right? And not y and not y. And, and that's the ones, and that's, so that represents that same function. So the complement of y is the same function. And there we have a very simple um, circuit for that. Now, the other way that we have learned to, to um, 
write an equivalent Boolean expression for a table is to use the sum of min terms. And so we could do with this exact same table, we could, we could write the sum of min terms, right? Because we know how to do that. So that first one is a complement of x times the complement of y. We get a one there. And then we go to the other one plus x times the complement of y is where we get the other one. And so that's the sum of min terms. This is an equivalent expression. But when we convert this then, we use this to make a circuit, it's a more complex circuit. So even though it's a, uh, an equivalent Boolean expression, it's a more complex Boolean expression. So we see we were able to really simplify it using the Carnot map. Now it turns out that we could also simplify this expression using Boolean algebra, right? So we can see how that could be done. We could take, here's our starting expression, and then we could use this, the distributive law to pull that complement of y out. We could use the complement, y, the complement law, because we have the complement of x plus x, which gives us 1. And then we can use the identity law to get back to, to get all the way to that simple version of the complement of y. So using the Carnot map, we ended up coming up with the same expression that we came up using simplification. Now, uh, this works pretty straightforward when we have two variables, right? And in fact, simplifying with Boolean algebra is the preferred method for two variables. That's pretty straightforward. We know how to do that, and we really get a simple version. It becomes more difficult as, numbers, as the number of variables increase. And so as we transition from two variables to three, then we move to using Carnot maps as a way to simplify expressions.